Hello and welcome to this video for A-Level Physics in the OCR specification looking at Module 3 Forces of Motion in the subtopic of Materials and on the concept of force extension graphs. So in today's lesson what we're going to look at is how to analyse force extension graphs of different materials. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson we should be able to recall what Hooke's Law is understand the elastic and plastic behaviour of objects and then detail the different force extension graphs in what they actually illustrate. So we're going to be looking at the following part of the OCR A-Level Physics specification. 3.4.2, the mechanical properties of matter. So we're going to be looking at the force extension graphs and the work done being the area under the graph. So, we can calculate the energy stored in an object exhibiting elastic behaviour with a force extension graph. So, for an object exhibiting elastic behaviour, the deformant force and the extension that it causes are directly proportional. So, this will produce a force extension graph with a line of best fit which is a straight line through the origin. So, for an object that obeys Hooke's law, we can say that the energy stored is equal is stored by the stretch material is equal to the work done on the material stretching it because if it's obeying Hooke's law it must be exhibiting elastic behavior so what we can say is that work done is equal to the force times by the displacement now as you can tell from the force extension graph the deformant force is not constant, it is actually increasing. So we need to use the average force in this equation instead. Now we can say that the average force is a half F because our starting force is zero and our final force is F and it's a constant straight line. So it indicates to us the average from zero to one is going to be a half. So we can substitute this into the equation. So what we can say is that work done is equal to a half F, the average force, times by the displacement, which in this case is going to be the extension, or delta L. So this is actually the area under the line of best fit, because you've got force and you've got extension, and the area underneath this particular graph is going to be a triangle, which is a half base times height, so it's a half F times by extension. Now, in this particular example, the elastic potential energy store is the one that's being stored in that stretch spring. So, what does this tell us? This tells us that if the spring is suddenly released, that the elastic energy stored in it is then suddenly transferred to, into the kinetic energy of the spring. Or, what we could also say is that the work done on the spring is stored as elastic potential energy. Now we can say that this energy is fully recoverable in this situation because the object in this instance is exhibiting elastic behaviour. Now if the material has gone through plastic deformation which will be indicated on the graph with a curved line then some of the work being done on the material will have gone into moving its atoms of the material to new permanent positions. So therefore this energy would not be recoverable. Now as we said before, work done is a half F times by extension or delta L. Now as this is an elastic object, we know that Hooke's law is being obeyed. And Hooke's law is F is equal to K times by delta L times by extension. So what we can do is we can then substitute this value into the value of F in the particular work done equation stated above. So if we substitute this in, we can say that the work done is a half K times by extension squared. So what this indicates to us is that for a given spring, energy is directly proportional to the extension squared. So what this will indicate to us is that doubling the extension quadruples our energy stored. Now it's important to know that as we said before, if the material is stretched beyond the elastic limit, some work is done in changing the position of the atoms. So this would not be stored as elastic energy which would later be released. So what we can indicate from this is that when an object is inelastic or plastic, 
that these work done equations stated on this uh, screen cannot be used. So just to clarify, the work done in this instance is the elastic potential energy stored in a spring. Well, we can say the work done is a half times by F times by delta L equals a half times by K times by delta L squared. And the work done, or the elastic potential energy stored, is the area under the straight line of best fit for a force extension graph. Now, whilst the force and extension can be measured for a steel spring, the same can also be carried out for a rubber band. So on this screen below, are sample results uh, gathered for a rubber material. So you've got to think about, does the rubber obey Hooke's law? And could you actually calculate the spring constant for rubber? Well, you can firstly say that rubber does not obey Hooke's law as the line in this force extension graph is not straight. So therefore, force and extension are never directly proportional. Now, because there's no straight line section of the graph, then there's no possible area on this graph where you can calculate a spring constant. However, the area under the curve still does show the amount of elastic potential energy stored in the rubber band. So we can say that the area under this curve is the elastic potential energy stored in the material as it's being stretched. So to calculate the area, you can count the squares of the graph split the area into different shapes, or integrate the equation of the line. Now, when considering force extension measurements for loading a rubber material with weight and unloading a rubber material with weight, the following curve is achieved. So the blue line shows the results for loading the rubber band. Now, just to clarify, loading a material is when a deformant force is placed on the material and is then increased. So the blue line is called a loading curve, whilst the red line here shows the results for unloading the rubber band. So unloading the material is when a deformant force on the material is then decreased. So the red line is called an unloading curve. So you've got both a loading curve and an unloading curve for this rubber band. So what we can say from this graph is that the rubber band shows different material properties when loading as compared to unloading. So what we can note is that there's different properties as the loading process on the rubber band has inelastically or plastically deformed the material. Now looking at this graph in more detail, the blue loading line has a greater area under the curve than the red one, so therefore has more elastic potential energy stored. Conversely, you could say the red unloading line has a smaller area under the curve, so is storing less elastic potential energy. So this produces different areas under the curve for each line, indicating that there's a different amount of elastic potential energy stored in the material between loading and unloading. Now, there is less elastic potential energy stored in the material when unloading compared to loading, why is this? What work has been done? Now the difference in energy stored in the rubber band is due to some energy becoming internal energy of the molecules. So consider how particles behave when a material is acting elastically. If the object is acting like an elastic when it is put under tension, the atoms of the material are pulled apart from one another. Now, the atoms can move small distances relative to their equilibrium positions without change of position in the material. Now, once the load is removed, the atoms return to their same equilibrium distance apart. So, therefore, the material would still be obeying Hooke's law. But consider what happens if to the particles after the material has inelastically deformed. Now, if the deformation is inelastic or plastic, the material is permanently stretched after the force has been removed. So what this means is that some atoms in the material move position relative to one another. So when the load is removed, the atoms do not return to their original position. The material has been stretched past its elastic limit. So the stretching effect makes the molecules absorb energy and start to vibrate faster. So it increases the internal energy of the band. 
so we can sense that the energy has changed store, work has been done. So the internal energy of the molecules increases, which increases the temperature of the rubber band. So we can say work has been done by the rubber band. Now we have a name for this energy dissipation out of a material via this process, and it's called hysteresis. Now, we can derive the work done by the rubber band into the internal energy of the band by measuring the change in the areas under the curves. So in our loading curve here, you can see the area under it is the elastic potential energy stored when the rubber band is being loaded. Whilst in this one, we can see it's the elastic potential energy stored when the rubber band is being unloaded. So the difference between the loading area under the curve and the unloading area under the curve is the work done by the rubber band. So the work is done to rearrange the atoms of the material and energy is transferred to the thermal energy store of the object and its surroundings. So we can say energy is dissipated via hysteresis. Now the loop formed by the loading and unloading curve as shown on the screen is called a hysteresis loop. Now actually this has many useful situations in the real world. So work is done rearranging atoms of material in energy being transferred to the thermal energy store of the object and surroundings. And that's used in the crumple zone of vehicles. So they inelastically deform during a crash, so less energy is transferred to the passengers within the car. Now the following graph here shows the force extension graph of a sample of material with a particular shape and size for this rubber band. Now we can sense that the unloading line goes through the origin. So this tells us that the rubber band returns to its original shape after all of the force has been unloaded. Now the area under the loading curve is the work done to stretch the rubber band, whilst the area under the unloading curve is the work done by the rubber band being unloaded. So to clarify, once again, the area between the loading and unloading curves is the difference between the energy stored in the stretched rubber band and the energy recovered when unstretched. And the difference between the energy stored and the energy recovered is because some of the energy is transferred to the internal energy of the molecules. Now this force extension graph is one for a metal wire. Now the unloading line does not go through the origin. This indicates to us that the wire is permanently stretched. Now the area between the loading and unloading lines is the work done to permanently deform the wire because the wire has undergone plastic deformation. It's also important to note that the loading and unloading lines are parallel as the bulk properties of the metal stay constant through the loading and unloading process. So what we can say is that in the loading and unloading lines, they can be parallel as the metal has the same spring or stiffness constant. Now this is a force extension graph of a plastic strip. Now firstly, the unloading line does not go through the origin. This indicates to us that the plastic strip has been permanently deformed. Now the plastic does not obey Hooke's law and the plastic is very easy to stretch and suffers plastic deformation under relatively little force. So as we know, the area between the loading and unloading curves is the sum of the work done to deform the strip and to also transfer energy to the internal energy of the molecules. So that brings an end to our lesson today. In today's lesson, we shall have looked at the force extension graph and the work done being the area under the graph considered force extension graphs for both springs and wires and consider how to investigate force extension characteristics for arrangements that could be springs, rubber bands or polythene strips. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to recall Hooke's law, understand the elastic and plastic behaviour of objects and detail the different force extension graphs and what they illustrate. So that brings an end to our lesson for Module 3, Forces of Motion, on the subtopic of 3.4 materials, on the concept of force extension graphs. Thank you very much for watching this video, and as always, have a lovely day.